Welcome to the Z-Hut. Today we're going to take a look at how to build your own Android Bluetooth controlled universal remote. Now what we'll do first is we'll go through the circuits. You're going to have to build two circuits. Then um, we'll take a look at the code. And then we'll look at the app. And then we'll go over how to modify the app to fit your remote control. Now to start with, you can see I've got both of them here built on breadboards. And the f one here is the receiver. Now what you need this for is to map your remotes to get the codes off of them. And it's real, real simple. You got your Arduino board. Then you've got an infrared receiver. And these are easy to get. Um, I actually took this one out of a junk VCR. Anything that is has an infrared remote control is going to have one of these. And if you've got junk one laying around, you won't have to order it. You can just snag it right out of there. Now, um, <clears throat> the Arduino runs on 5 volts. And that's why I got this resistor right here. Uh, if I remember right, I think I got 1K on here. Because these usually run around 3 volts. And that knocked it down within tolerable range. But uh, this this super easy circuit to build, very easy. And uh, this one I would recommend just doing on a breadboard because once you map your remotes, you're not going to need this anymore. So there's no sense soldering it up, making a permanent one. It, uh, you can also, the first time I done this, I built it on the same board. And then once I was done, I just removed it. But it's up to you how you'd like to do that. Oh, and for the schematic on this, and the Arduino code, and the app, everything, um, just go to the website, and you'll find a link to that in the description below. And all that's on there. The app's free. I wrote the app myself, and it's free. And I'll even give you a, uh, a copy of it that you can open up and modify. So you can, you can customize this uh, project for your own uh, devices that you want to control. Now, for the transmitter, you can see, of course, we've got an infrared LED, and you're going to need one of them. And um, that you can actually, if you've got a junk remote control, you can snag it out of there. No sense buying a part if you don't need it. <clears throat> then, uh, of course, you're going to need the Arduino board. And I have a, uh, a plug here, so I can plug a wall ward in it. You could run this on a 9-volt battery. If you do, I'd use a rechargeable battery because it's probably maybe last a day or two if you left it turned on the whole time. And you're also going to need a Bluetooth transceiver. I'm using the HC06, and you can also use the HC05. That's just um, a slightly different model that's a uh, master and a slave, where the HC06 is just a slave. <clears throat> and then, um, as you can see, I have a voltage divider here. There is a 10K and a 5K resistor in here. And the reason for that is the, um, the receive on this is only 3 volts. And the Arduino is putting out 5. So these two resistors cut it down within toleration. The, um, <clears throat> the transmit line is uh, from the board is... Fine, you don't have to worry about putting resistors or anything in there. It'll handle the 5 volts. Perfectly fine. And like I said, you just um, go to the website and you can find the schematic on this. Now, um, some people don't use a transistor in here, but I find I get more range. And this is just a 2N2222. Pretty much the most common transistor in the world. And by putting that in there, I get a little more range out of this. Um... Not quite sure why it uh, just running off the board, but uh, I was getting about an extra five to ten feet range. And this circuit, as it's set up, if I remember, I was getting about fifteen feet, maybe twenty if it was dark range out of it. And um, for the finished version, I am planning to mount it in one of these, and this is um, called a conduit body. There's a cap that goes on here, but it's um, for like outdoors and you run your conduit and stuff in it. 
You can get this at your hard local hardware store or home improvement store. And I think I paid three dollars for the conduit body. And then I think I had like another dollar, dollar fifty into the end cap because what I'm going to do is put the infrared LED out of this, then put the circuitry in here, and then probably right back here I'll drill a hole to mount uh, the plug for the wall wart. All right, well with that, I think we can go over to the computer and uh, I'll bring up the Arduino code and um, I'll show you first we'll go over how to map your remote, which is easy, and then we'll go through the code um, for the transmitter on how to uh, transmit and modify that to your remote because all remotes are pretty much different. Um, I very rarely found a remote that from a different model TV or VCR or whatever that will work with another, but rarely it does happen. But uh, All right, so I'll see you in just a moment over at the computer. Okay, so now that you have the circuits built, what we can start with doing is um, before you open up your IDE, Arduino IDE, you need to uh, go to the website and you're going to want to download, uh, there's a link on the web page, to download the, uh, the IR remote library. And that's a free download. Um, like I said, just go to my website and there will be a link right towards the top of the description on how to get it and then just import that library into your IDE. After you do that, then you just simply go to examples and go down to IR remote and we want IR receive dump this one right here click on that it'll open it up so what you do is just leave everything the way it is and just click upload and we'll give it just a moment here it should upload pretty quick All right, it's done uploading. Next, open the serial monitor. Let me shrink this down a little so it fits on the screen. There we go. Then what you do is you take your remote control, the one that you want to map out, and simply pick which button you want to map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the number one on my remote, and I'm aiming it right at the, um, the infrared receiver on the board. Click it, and you can see there's the code. What I usually do is I click it two or three times just to make sure nothing glitches and I get the same code. Now as you can see, this is an NEC remote and this is going to be one of your most common remotes out there, at least that I've found. Then this is your hex number, and this is the number that you're going to need for that button, and this is the number of bits. So what I usually do is I'll keep this open and then I'll also have the sketch open that I'm modifying and I'll just simply copy and paste right into the sketch. It's pretty easy to do and you just go and you do all your buttons and um, I'll just do one button at a time. So after that what you need to do is you will have of course hopefully already downloaded my sketch for the universal remote and you just need to come in and change these hex numbers to fit your remote. You can hear here's the beginning. I got the IR remote library and the serial and we want to pretty much skip by all this. Don't mess with anything. Um, this here just tells it if you're using button one remote or button two remote because there's the way I have the app written up so far is you can run two different devices and that just tells tells the um, the program which device codes that you want to send. So what we need to do is go down to these. Now for a list of what that button is on the app itself, they're pretty self-explanatory, but I'll uh, take a picture and I'll write that all out on there so you can look and figure out which uh, button code is for which button on the Bluetooth app for the uh, Android. So now as you can see here, here's my code. Now if I was changing this, as you notice over here, there is no 0 and X. 
some reason this doesn't put it on there and if you forget to put that in front of the number over here it won't be a hex number and the program will not recognize it and it just won't work so you just put the zero in X and what you do is I would just you know select that and then paste over it and then right here if you're not 32 bits if it's like 16 bit or whatever just replace that and that's how easy it is you just gotta go and replace the code for all them buttons <laughs> it's uh, probably gonna take you a half hour I'd say to go through and do two remotes it's well maybe not quite a half hour maybe 15 minutes um, just take your time make sure you know hit each one two three times just make sure because every once in a while you'll get um, a malfunction will give you the wrong code and by doing it like you can see I did it three times they're all the same so we know that's the right code alright um, with that there isn't really anything else that you should be modifying or messing with on this code otherwise it probably won't work so what we'll do next is um, we'll go over and I'll uh, show you the app Okay, well, I got uh, my little TV set up, and you can see right here, I have the uh, transmitter. And then I've got my tablet right here, my little RCA tablet. Now, once you got the app on there, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to demonstrate how to use this. And uh, then after that, I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you how to modify this app. So, <clears throat> start with, you just click on the app. Then this screen comes up, and you're going to want to c click on Connect. Then choose your Bluetooth device. Now I renamed mine to Remote, so I'm just going to click on Remote. Now it'll take a moment to connect. It shouldn't take too long. There we go. Now I got number one, number two. Number two is my TV number two. Now. I hit the power button. Oh, look at that. She turned on. All right, it'll take her a moment to get going. Oh, well, let's turn the volume up, huh? All right, the volume's at 100%. Now let's turn the volume down, so we'll scroll down a little. Uh, now, Zena, that's easy for you to say. You weren't there. Gabrielle's plan kept Jed off balance long enough to find a man on the inside, right? Yeah, that's right. Pontius. That'll turn the volume down. Now there's also all the other buttons, like the info. Click it, there's info. You click it again, you get some more info. Click it again, gone. Scroll down. Source. Oh, well, we can select our source. And you just select whichever one you want and hit OK. <laughs> Let's change channels. Channel down. No, oh, don't like that channel. We'll just go back up the channel we were at. <clears throat> and then you scroll down through the app. There's all the the buttons you'd find on most remote controls, most buttons are there. Otherwise, um, I am going to show you here in just a minute um, how to go ahead and reconfigure, rename some of these buttons in case, you know, you don't have a source button. I mean, you're using a, a CD player and you wanted to make, like, the OK button play or anything like that. And that's really easy to do, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So, I'll catch you over there on the computer then and again in just a moment. All right. Now that you're ready to modify the app to, to fit your remote, what you're going to have to do first is uh, you're going to need the MIT App Inventor. And you'll find a link um, on my website for that. And like I said before, just look in the description below and... Uh, go to this projects site and uh, you'll find all that there. 
Now, uh, then you're going to need also the AIA file, which is the app um, program, not the APK. The APK is the finished app. The AIA file is one that you can work with and modify. Um, you will not be able to open the APK in MIT App Inventor. Now, once you get that downloaded and opened up in MIT App Inventor, uh, first of all, make sure you got display hidden components checked, otherwise you see nothing's going to really show up except the connect button. So you click that. Now, down here, you can see I have actually renamed this one. Uh, earlier, I was doing some playing around with it, and uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this button name, and this will work for any of the other buttons. Now you see this is highlighted, and it's surrounded by that green box. If you click outside, it highlights the whole area and all. That's the arrangement. You don't want the arrangement. You want the button itself. So I have this labeled CD player right now. Let's say we want to change the name of it. So you go down, you see right here, text, and there's a CD player. Well, I'm going to put this back to TV1. So I type in TV number 1, hit enter, there it is. Now, you see the font size is small. Change the font size, just highlight it, and 30 is um, what I used for the other one. There we go. Now uh, you can also change if you want it bold or not, or if you want italic or not. Um, and it's the same thing, any of the buttons you want to change. Um, you just click on the button and then you can go over here and you can change the text to it. Now these are special characters as you can see right here. Uh, like this is the power button, up, down. Those are just alt codes. Um, I'll have a link to on the website uh, to get the list for the alt codes. You just hold down the alt button and type in a three digit number and it gives you these specialty characters. And like I said, you can change the font size here and all that. I wouldn't mess too much with anything else. Um, unless you really know what you're doing, you can go ahead and have fun with this. Um, I'm giving it for free, so. Have fun. Um, with that, I think we'll wrap this tutorial up. Thanks for joining us here at the Z-Hut. Have fun building this project, and I hope to see you here again.